Hey there, this tutorial is about making grass in Game Maker. You wanna place grass in your room, but if you use objects, it's gonna slow down your game. So we are not gonna use objects at all. Instead, we are gonna use a vertex buffer. A vertex buffer is how you tell the GPU to draw something. It's kind of low level. You have to build everything with triangles. Let's say you wanna draw this image with a vertex buffer. So this is a rectangle. But to build this, you need to create two triangles. A triangle has three vertices. So you will be making six vertices in total. Now let's take a look at one single vertex. For each vertex, you'll need to pass in some data. The data required will be set up with your vertex format. Our vertex format will require this data, position, text code, and color. So each vertex will be made up of this data. This is the position where the vertex will be drawn. This is the texture coordinates. And this will define the color and the alpha of the vertex. Now with the texture coordinates, the vertices will be mapped on the texture page. And this is how the image will be drawn. And so in this way, we'll be drawing multiple images in the same vertex buffer. So let's begin. Here we have a simple project with a moving player. Now the grass that we are gonna draw is here. We have three sub images, so there will be some variation in the grass. Then here we have a simple box image. This will be used to define a grass area. Now we are gonna go into objects. Here we are gonna create a new object. This will be O grass area. Here I'm gonna select the sprite. And now we are gonna add the create event. Here we'll be creating our vertex buffer. So first we are gonna set up some variables. Now this is the sprite that we are gonna use for the grass. Then this is how many frames we have in that sprite. So to get that, we use sprite get number. Now we are getting the texture page of the sprite. So we do that with sprite get texture. We pass in the sprite ID and the frame number. Then here we get the width and the height of the grass sprite. Now we have some properties for the grass in the vertex buffer. This is the grass count. So this is how many grass images we have in the vertex buffer. Then we have the color and the alpha of all the grass in the buffer. Now we are gonna set up some 3D properties and our vertex format. So I'll add this here. Here we are enabling Z testing. This is how the grass that is closer to the camera will appear in front. And here we are enabling alpha testing. This allows for transparency in the vertex buffer. Now here we are creating our vertex format. So with this function, we begin creating it. And here we are defining the data required by each vertex. First we have position 3D. So we need to pass in the x, y, and z for the vertex. Then we have the texture coordinates. And then we have the color. And then with this function, we end our vertex format. The format can then be accessed through this variable. And now we are gonna build our vertex buffer. So I'll be adding a lot of code here. So after building the vertex format, this is where we are. Here we are creating our vertex buffer. And with this, we are gonna start writing into that buffer. So we are writing into this vertex buffer. And we are using this vertex format. Now we are gonna create the two triangles for each grass image in this repeat loop. So all the code here is gonna be repeated this many times. And so that's how many grass images will be created in the vertex buffer. Now we are gonna look inside the repeat loop. Here we are getting the grass coordinates. 
and this will be a rectangle. So this rectangle is where the grass image will be drawn in the room. Now this is the top left corner of the rectangle. And this is the bottom right corner. Now to get the x1, we are doing this. We are getting a random integer between b box left and b box right. These are the left and right edges of the grass area. Now for y1, we are doing something similar. Of course, the range here is from b box top to b box bottom. So the grass image will be placed randomly inside the grass area. Now here we have the x2. For that we are adding the width to x1. And this is the width of the grass sprite. Then for the y2, we are adding the height to y1. Now here we have the depth value for the grass image. We are setting it to minus y2. Now this is the same technique as when we do depth equals minus y in an object. Now here we are getting the texture coordinates. First of all we are selecting a random frame number to be used. So the maximum value for that random number is frames minus 1. That is the last frame in the sprite. So the frame will be a random number between 0 and this value. And now we are getting the actual texture coordinates. For that we use sprite get uvs. We pass in the sprite id and the frame number. And so we get the uvs for the image. These are simply the texture coordinates. So this will be an array. The array will have these elements. The left x, the top y, the right x and the bottom y. So these are the texture coordinates. We are now gonna build our triangles. Here we have the whole rectangle for the grass image. These are the two triangles that make up our rectangle. Each triangle has three vertices. And each vertex has some data. Now this vertex is the top left corner of the first triangle. We are passing in the data as defined by the vertex format. First we have the position. In the first argument of all of these functions, we are gonna have the vertex buffer. From the second argument, we have the x, y and z. So for the x and the y, we are passing in x1 and y1. And for the z, we are passing in the depth. Now after this line, we have the texture coordinates. For that, we are passing in uv0 and uv1. So that would be the top left corner of the texture image. Now here we are setting the color for this vertex. So we are simply passing in the color and the alpha. Now this way we have set up our first vertex. And here is our second vertex. This is the top right corner. For the x and y here, we are passing in the x2 and y1. Then for the uvs, we have 2 and 1. And then again the same color and alpha. Now we come to the third and final vertex of this triangle. This would be at the bottom left corner. For the position here, we have x1 and y2. Then for the uvs, we have 0 and 3. So this now makes up our first triangle. And now we are gonna build our second triangle. First let's take a look here. You can see that these two vertices exist in the first triangle and in the second triangle. So those two vertices are here. These are the exact same as the vertices here. So the only different vertex here is this one. And this is the bottom right corner. So here the x and y position is x2 and y2. And the uvs here are 2 and 3. So now the grass image is complete. Now after the repeat loop is over, we have this. Here we stop writing to the vertex buffer using vertex end. And then we freeze the buffer using vertex freeze. This way the buffer becomes read only. So now you can't change it. Now by doing this, the vertex buffer becomes faster. 
and since we don't need to change it now, we are freezing it. Now we are gonna add the draw event. Here we are gonna draw the vertex buffer. To draw a vertex buffer, we use vertex submit. This is the vertex buffer that we are drawing. And this is basically how the vertices will be interpreted. In our vertex buffer, we have a list of triangles. So here we are specifying triangle list. And finally, we are passing in the texture. Now we are gonna do some cleaning up in the cleanup event. I'll add this here. Here we are simply deleting the vertex buffer and the vertex format. Now in my room, I'm gonna place some grass areas. And now I'll run the game. And we can see the grass, but the player doesn't really go through it. It's always below the grass. So I'm gonna go into the player object. I'm gonna add the end step event. I'm gonna set the depth here. It's equal to minus p box bottom. Now I'll run the game and the issue should be fixed. And the player can go through the grass now. Now you're gonna notice that there's less grass here and more here. Now this is a larger area. So the grass is more spread out here. Now we are gonna make it so that if an area is larger, there's more grass inside it. So we are gonna go into the create event of the grass area. Here the grass count is set to a constant 500. I'm gonna remove that and add this instead. We are multiplying the width of the area with its height. We are then dividing that by 40. So the grass count will now be dependent on the size of the area. I'm gonna run the game and now the grass is more constant. Now you can fill the whole room with grass and the game will still run fine. So this is very fast because it runs entirely on the GPU. But as a result, you can't collide with the grass. Maybe you could implement some workaround with a shader, but that's basically all you have. Now you can also simulate wind with a shader. I have an asset on the marketplace that comes with a wind shader. I'll put a link down in the description. For more tutorials, take a look at this playlist. You can also check out this video. To catch my future videos, you can subscribe here. And I'll see you in the next one.